And thank you for this hearing about building resilience for our economy, for our climate and our ecosystems, which are really interchangeable, right, in so many ways uh, and, and connected. Attacks on our environment in Florida have been worsened uh, by the climate crisis and by a huge increase in populations. We see more intense hurricanes uh, because of climate change. We see stressed aquifers and water supply because of increasing populations. Flood control always is a major concern. We work closely with the Army Corps of Engineers. With rising seas, you see saltwater intrusion into our wastewater treatment and plumbing. And we're also trying to work to prevent red tide through nutrients going in the ocean and exacerbating this natural phenomenon. Part of increasing resiliency in many of these water systems will improve our water supply, preserve our wildlife, and protect recreation and tourism, which means the economy in Florida. In my district, we have the Northern Everglades. Uh, it starts just north of me and goes through the Kissimmee Channel Lakes all the way down through to Lake Okeechobee and beyond to the traditional Everglades that many people are familiar with in South Florida. Uh, so finishing the Kissimmee River restoration, uh, which is almost done uh, to clean water going into Lake Okeechobee, a key part of that. Finishing the dike around Lake Okeechobee to update water schedules and improve our conservation uh, for both uh, communities around the lake and south of the lake and north of the lake. Really critical. Also improving flood control and water storage in the Kissimmee Channel Lakes, like Lake Tehopakaliga in my area, where we help store water so we don't overload Lake Okeechobee. Restoring many of Florida's natural springs, which have uh, had some issues lately. And we've converted some of these flood control water bodies also to water storage. Recently, I was able to pass legislation in the Water Resource Development Act for Taylor Creek in Osceola County, which is used for water storage uh, for, for flood control and now be used for water storage as well. So we're able to do both at the same time in Polk County uh, in our area in citrus country. That also continues to be a big issue as we work with local governments there uh, to create a new reservoir there. <clears throat> and Chairman, I hope we can this term pass our Restoring Resilient Reefs Act to help save the Great Florida Reef, along with reefs in Hawaii and other areas. Um, by which are under attack by warming seas, by wastewater releases, and be able to repropagate the reef with new coral. We, we could upgrade our water infrastructure to include both reducing wastewater discharges that pollute our oceans and reefs, along with greater resiliency to water, saltwater intrusion. The comprehensive Everglades restoration plan is also critical. Storing and cleaning more water going into the Everglades to preserve America's sea of grass. These projects must be part of the Build Back Better infrastructure package we will be putting together later this spring. So thank you for putting this together. And I believe this presents a bipartisan opportunity uh, to improve and restore water systems, create hydro energy, and to restore uh, coastal regions. Uh, Captain Mojeski, as part of the American Recovery Act of 2009, we saw shovel-ready projects in coastal restoration, some of these other projects, put to work uh, Americans who are trying to get back to work. Can we do this again uh, with this infrastructure package we have uh, coming up very soon uh, with the economy the way it is? Uh, thank you for that question. Um, I'll, I'll answer as best as I can. I think yes. I think the programs that we've had in the past in place have really worked. Um, when I look back at, you know, the 2009, there was like 152 restoration projects that were funded and it built amazing economy, amazing jobs, and it provided the goods and services that we need in this changing climate. So I definitely think that there's room for it and I look forward to that opportunity to see it happen. So there's a way that we can restore our economy and our environment through these key uh, infrastructure projects. Uh, isn't that correct? I totally agree, yes. And uh, Ms. Mosley, I know there's been some issues with a final rule strengthening wage protection uh, and ensuring foreign temporary workers are not adversely affected. Is there, how, how do you view, view Dr. Mosley, the final rule that just came out? You know, I, I'm not a, 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 a immigration attorney. Um, I think one of the things, so I'll, let me sort of focus on the importance of um, the, the, the wage side of this rather than the immigration side of this. What I, I think is really critical, so many of these projects are subject 
to the Service Contract Act wages. And I think what we really need to be focused on is in, ensuring that uh, workers are paid uh, the wages that they're entitled to, um, and that that really should happen regardless of the uh, their immigration status, and whether they're guest workers or or uh, citizens or other have other statuses. Thank you. My time's expired.